A new season means a new way to play the game. What's going on summoners, my name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be diving into our bot lane guide for season 13. While bot lane may not have had as many changes as the jungle, there are still a lot of new things to learn. The meta has shifted and favors a lot of champions that we haven't seen in quite a while. Plus with all the changes to the other roles, ADC has definitely been impacted. In this video, we're going to be talking about the purposes of ADCs, their different playstyles, how the season has impacted them, and more. Be sure to stick through to the end so you can prepare yourself for the upcoming ranked season. Regardless, let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Before we can dive into the actual guide of ADC, we have to understand what the role really means for the game. Every role in League serves an overall purpose and offers different playstyles to fulfill said purpose. In the top lane, you got the primary purpose of providing pressure. There are a few options for this, such as being a massive frontline that can CC the enemy and tank for your team. You can also create pressure by split pushing and taking objectives by yourself. The jungle looks to get their team ahead and secure objectives. Sometimes this is done by constantly ganking and taking neutral monsters. Other times, they can play for skirmishes and get themselves a lead so they can go ahead and carry their team to victory. In the mid lane, you've got the ability to impact the entire map with the central location. They can be an assassin that looks to eliminate priority targets, control mages that micromanage fights, or skirmishers that want to roam around with their jungler for kills. Even supports have different purposes. Their main goal is to help their allies and set up vision. They can do this by dealing damage to carry fights and ensure vision control, protect their priority targets with enchanters, or help CC enemies as an engaged tank. No matter what role you pick, you will always have one primary goal that you're looking to achieve. As an ADC, your main goal is going to be pumping out DPS and helping your team burn objectives. Your high damage lets you shred through turrets and things like Baron or Dragon. While some ADCs can do this better than others, their overall team goal remains the same. It's also important to keep in mind that ADCs have been incorporating mages into their lane these past few seasons, and this somewhat breaks the overall goal that we've set in place. We'll touch on this more later into the video. Before we continue on, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new courses and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the ProGuides family. Anyway, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we want to take a minute to look at how Season 13 has impacted Marksman as a whole. In the older days of League, Marksmen were known as the tank shredders of the game. Champions like Vayne and Kogma ruled the competitive scene as they were able to shred through the tanker enemies while also mowing down squishier ones. As time has passed, Marksmen have quickly embraced the role of rolling through squishy champions while struggling through the beefier ones. Season 13 has introduced a ton of items for tanks, juggernauts, and bruisers. These items not only give them a lot of bonus resistances, but they can increase their HP and also support allies by healing. This shift in atomization means that Marksmen will have to follow suit in order to survive. Builds like Gale Force Collector or Gale Force Bloodthirster won't suffice in a majority of games. While we wouldn't say that you're gonna have to itemize anti-tank in every ranked match that you play, you should at least get familiar with them. Some Marksmen such as Samara, Jin, and Aphelios are able to build Lord Dominic's regards as early as third item without hindering their itemization too much. Others like Jinx require zeal item in between before they can even look to grab tank shred. If you're a zeal user, you'll want to likely grab Phantom Dancer if you're trying to melt through tanks. This grows in power when paired with Kraken Slayer. For all of our on-hit enthusiasts, you're likely going to be looking at Kraken Slayer with a combination of Bork, Rageblade, and possibly Lord Dominance. Overall, ADCs don't have to build anti-tank every game, nor do they have to completely readjust their builds due to the new season. But build diversity is going to be at an all-time high as you'll need to swap your build path for each and every game. If the enemy team has far too many tanks and you're on Jinx, you'll need to grab Kraken, PD, IE, and LDR. If you're looking to just wipe squishy your enemies, you can look for something like Kraken or Gale Force with Runins or Rapid Fire and Infinity Edge, then just opt for something tanky or a Bloodthirster. Make sure for next season that you're aware of your build options and how you can best itemize for your game. With all of this talk about flexibility and itemization, let's talk about mages in the bot lane. Mages have been bleeding into the ADC role for about 3 seasons now. It all started with Ziggs who was able to dominate the marksman role because he could safely poke and easily accomplish their overall goals. He was able to survive the laning phase with ease. He could also get weight priority whenever necessary, if there was a small skirmish he could be there, and dealt decent enough DPS to dragons and barons to secure them. Alongside this, he was also able to take turrets extremely fast thanks to his passive and his executing W. Once everyone saw how successful Ziggs was, champions like Syndra and Swain started to see more play. They were able to dominate the lane and punish weaker marksmen with ease. Eventually, we reached the point where some supportive champions and a few others like Seraphine, Hymer, and even Soraka at one point was powerful. Season 13 is looking to be no different. Mages in the bot lane will continue to be prominent as they are far more powerful and offer a steady damage curve compared to ADCs. While they may offer weaker siege and objective taking, they make up for it with sheer damage, wave control, and safety. If you're looking to climb, we heavily recommend you pick up and learn at least one of the basic AP bot laners. 
Whether it's Seraphine or even Vagar, they're always worth having in your pool. Plus your 80 mid and 80 jungle enjoyers will love you for it. It's important to keep in mind that although mages will be powerful, there is always room for marksmen on the team. Don't feel too pressured to give up on ranged carries as a whole simply because a few mages are strong. There is a time and a place for every champion, just be sure to understand when yours fits. Now before moving on, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today, we want to ask you all, what is one item that you wish could return to the game? Personally, I know it's a toxic item, but I do miss Deathfire Grasp. It was an interesting item that was a bit broken, but was still fun to play with overall. My other entries would probably be Wiggle's Lantern, Brutalizer, or even Heart of Gold. I've been playing this game for far too long. Anyway, let me know your answers in the comments down below, and let's dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, let's take a moment and break down all the different ADC playstyles and what they can really provide for both you and your team. While we won't be able to cover all of them due to the few unique cases such as Yasuo, Santa Lanes, or Mages, we'll try our best to cover the priority ones so you can be prepared for the next season. Starting us off with our first major playstyle, we've got our early game masters. These are champions that offer high base damage with decent AD scalings. This upfront damage allows them to out damage the enemy for the majority of the early game. Alongside their strong laning phase, they're also great at skirmishing thanks to their damage and kits. These marksmen are able to easily single out and delete a target for their team so they can secure early dragons and or heralds. For early game dominant champions, you'll most likely see Draven, Lucian, Samara, and even Caitlyn. While all of these early game ADCs offer different playstyles, they all have a similar goal in mind, win the early game. You can win through sheer damage with somebody like Draven, through turret pressure and poke with Caitlyn, dominate skirmishes with Samara, or do a little bit of everything with Lucian. Regardless of what you choose, early game champions are meant to stop the early game, so that way you can build up a lead and then just end the game as fast as possible. Next up we got our hyperscalers, which are the classic definition of an ADC. Before there were strong early game champions, marksmen were the late game insurance for their teams. Hyperscalers offer weak early game due to their lack of base damage, but they also offer some of the highest AD scalings in the game. These champions heavily rely on the three item power spikes to completely dominate games. Champions like Jinx, Aphilios, Kogma, and Vayne are great at this. As long as they stay safe early, they can scale up and easily 1v9 games with their damage. Just keep in mind that a majority of hyperscalers are bad duelists and are prone to dives due to their immobility. That being said, even hyperscalers offer unique playstyles for you to choose from. You can play front to back with Jinx or Kogma, flank with Twitch, kite and outplay with Vayne, or even offer some versatility with Aphilios. Overall, these champions love to farm and get stronger as the game goes on. This also ironically makes them extremely snowbally since the faster they reach their items, the faster they can take over the game. For our final primary playstyle, we got the utility based marksmen. These are champs that are looking to provide their team with a ton of utility. This utility ranges from getting picks, offering CC, providing peel, or doing a mixture of all three. While this playstyle isn't for everyone, it's great for those of you who are trying to look to play with your team and help them shine throughout the game. These marksmen offer a variety of different power curves, but they all share the fact that they're able to provide utility for their allies. Champions like Jin let you take control of areas and deal a lot of damage to single targets. Someone like Ash is able to guide your team into objectives through her strong vision control and pick potential. You can even opt for Varus if you're looking for some great teamfighting and a strong laning phase in order to secure dragons. Overall, utility marksmen have their own strengths and weaknesses and are some of the more unique champions within the ADC role. No matter who you end up picking, you'll always be able to provide your team with some much needed support. While we did cover most of the playstyles in a few subcategories, they can still be broken down further. We won't dive into these in today's video, but some of these champions are classified as lane bullies, terror takers, tank shredders, objective melters, playmakers, etc. There are also a few oddball champions that fall into multiple or none of the categories such as Ezreal, Kai'Sa, Senna, or many of the mages. Regardless of what champion or playstyle you choose, just make sure you know what your overall goal is. Pulling us towards the end of the video, let's finish up by talking about a few skill priorities that you should master. These skills are fundamental to improving your gameplay as an ADC and can help you climb. If you're looking to truly get better at ADC or bot lane, you should focus on these key things. CSing is incredibly important on a marksman due to the fact that they are heavily reliant on items. Even early game champions with lower AD scalings heavily rely on their early game power spikes. You should always aim for 10 CS per minute and practice farming in the practice tool so you don't miss out on the free gold during the laning phase. Once you've mastered your early laning and farm, be sure to focus on keeping your CS during the mid game. Most ADC players will have a solid 8 CS per minute during the laning phase and then have to drop it down to 5 or less simply because of the mid game. Stop wasting your time wandering around and participating in random fights. Instead, if you have nothing to do, go farm. Next up, we've got positioning. This includes knowing how to position yourself during the laning phase for optimal trades as well as during team fights to avoid dying. ADC can be an incredibly unforgiving role, and as your team's primary damage dealer, you need to stay alive as long as possible. Everyone on the enemy team is going to look to kill you when they get the chance. Be sure to be mindful of who the enemy is, what ability threats they may have, and who you can safely hit to pump out DPS. 
Finally, we've got map awareness. Whether you're looking to play the early game or scale into the late game, you've got to have map awareness. Playing Kaelin and living under the enemy turret can be strong, but if you don't know when to back off, you can easily lose your lead and lose the game. AFK farming under your turret as Jinx is fine, but if you don't pay attention, the wave can build up and the enemy can dive you. Be sure to look at your map as often as possible, and be prepared for plays that the enemy may make. You've got the summoners. And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video, but until then, don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.